If you live off-grid with batteries as your primary power source, and you're charging your USB devices like this or like this, stop. You're wasting power. You're running your inverter unnecessarily, and you might even be charging slower than you could be. What if I told you there's a better way? By the end of this video, you'll understand why you should be charging directly from your batteries and not using your inverter. Plus, I'm going to show you my favorite products that you can use to save power, charge faster, and save wear on your inverter. This might be my number one gripe when watching build videos, even from pro builders. When giving the tour, they probably point out all the USB ports throughout the vehicle, but these ports are often inside the AC outlets. And while it's convenient to install a 120 volt outlet that includes USB charging, there's a problem. USB charging occurs at 5 to 28 volts DC. That's a direct current, the same form of power that's stored in your batteries, in your cabin, RV, boat, etc. These 120 volt outlets deliver AC power. That's alternating current. So to charge your USB device at this outlet, power needs converted from the AC power to DC power. And when you're on the power grid, this is the type of power you're already receiving, so it makes some sense. However, if your power source is a battery bank and you rely on an inverter to convert your DC battery power into that AC power needed at these outlets, then it does not make a lot of sense to convert that DC power to AC power just to convert it back to DC power again. DC to AC to DC. AC DC! Now, of course, your hair dryer, cooktop, instant pot, or even your tea kettle require that AC power. And that's why we have inverters. But when charging USB devices or other DC powered devices, it's just wasteful. The reason this is not ideal is that there are several stages of inefficiencies when converting DC power to AC power and then back to DC power again. To start, all inverters consume some amount of power while at idle. So let's say you need to charge your phone. You turn on the inverter, and before you even start charging, there's an idle tax. Our Victron MultiPlus, for instance, consumes 13 watts of power when idling. So if I turn on my inverter and charge at 20 watts, that doesn't just cost us 20 watts, you also have to pay the inverter's overhead. If you look at this chart from Victron, you can see a 20 watt load as a 20 watt dissipation or wasted energy in the form of idle overhead, resistive losses, etc. So we're now at 40 watts, that's only 50% efficiency, but we're still not done. Once we've converted our DC battery power to AC power, and it travels back over to this plug, now the AC power has to be converted to DC power before we can charge our USB device. That happens inside this outlet if it has USB plugs or inside a wall wart. And according to Charger Lab, even a high quality Apple 20 watt charger is only about 89% efficient. That means we've lost up to another 11%, costing us another 2.5 watts. That means to charge at 20 watts with this charger, we're actually spending 42.5 watts, more than twice the actual output of the charger. So for every watt going into your USB device, more than one watt is being wasted as heat. Oh yeah, and I should caveat, I'm not an electrical engineer, and I'm not performing a rigorously controlled scientific test, but let this serve as a public service announcement. If you're charging your USB devices using your inverter, you're probably wasting energy. Of course, there is a better way. The solution is to use a DC to DC buck boost converter to change the voltage in your battery bank to USB charging voltage. There will still be minor losses in this single conversion, but far less than going from DC to AC and back to DC again. Plus you can leave your inverter off, saving wear and reducing heat output. This is a Charge It Mini from Cool Gear. They make a range of USB charging devices that can be powered directly from DC power. These feature overcurrent and over voltage protection. This model features one USB-A quick charge port and one USB-C power delivery port that can deliver up to 75 watts total, 15 watts on the USB-A and 60 watts on the USB-C. And it accepts nine to 28 volts DC on the input. There's even a 24 volt model that has two 100 watt USB-C PD ports. One advantage of these converters is that you can plug directly into them, or you can use any style of USB panel mount extension that you like. Across the aisle on our other bench, I use another Charge It Mini with a single 100 watt USB-C power delivery port that I use for my MacBook Pro for maximum charging. Then in our charging pantry, I use the 110 watt model that has two USB-C PD ports for things like laptops and tablets so we can charge them at high speed when they're not in use. This is where we hang out and do a lot of our work. So we put USB charging on the front of both of these benches, but I don't really need USB-A anymore. So I'm swapping out this USB-A, USB-C charger 
for this. PicoWay have sent me their 145 watt dual USB-C charger. It has a slightly wider voltage input at 9 to 32 volts, which should make it safe for your 24 volt systems. And thanks to power delivery 3.1, it can charge up to 140 watts to a single device. I also love that as USB technology evolves, you can swap your old ports for some new ports without having to touch your AC outlets. All right, so let's swap this in. I'm just going to wire the positive and negative of the device into my 12 volt DC sub panel, make sure the fuse size is good, then swap the port housing into my custom made panel mount, and we're done. Thanks to PicoWay for sending this along. They make a bunch of cool products for van automation, so be sure to check them out. I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. Okay, so how much power are we actually saving by using a DC to DC converter? Let's take a look at my MacBook Pro, for example. As mentioned, our Victron MultiBlus inverter charger has a maximum efficiency of 93%, but we need to keep in mind that efficiency curve. Charging curves are also non-linear, but if I turned on my inverter just to charge my MacBook Pro from empty to full at an average of 60 watts, I would likely see an average of 75% efficiency at the inverter, which would make our 60 watt load cost about 80 watts. But our load isn't actually 60 watts. If you're using an Apple USB-C charger, you can expect about 92% efficiency. So even at its very best, 60 watts from the charger costs us 65 watts. And when that compounds with our inverters inefficiencies, that 60 watts ends up costing us 87 watts from our battery bank. So for a given hour of charging at 60 watts, that would cost us 87 watts with 31% being lost to heat. That same 60 watts charged using a DC to DC converter that's about 95% efficient will cost us only 63 watts. Compared to the AC losses, we save nearly 24 watts per hour. So you can see if you have multiple USB devices charging for multiple hours, that could add up to hundreds of watts. There are of course a ton of variables here unique to your situation. The efficiencies of your inverter, wall warts, and USB outlets. And we haven't even talked about how temperature affects charging efficiency. Plus, there are certainly cases where maximum efficiency may not be as important. If your inverter is on and running other AC appliances, your inverter efficiency will be higher. And if you're on shore power or already run your inverter 100% of the time and have an abundance of solar, then the losses here may not matter to you. If you live in a van like us, have limited solar, and want to stretch your batteries to stay off grid for as long as possible, minimizing losses is important. If you want to include DC to DC charging in your build, you'll need to consider the types of devices you'll be charging and choose a converter that supports a charging protocol that can deliver the power you need. In general, modern phones and laptops are well served by USB PD 3.0 and above, which can provide up to 100 watts and includes PPS, which stands for Programmable Power Supply. This allows the charger to adjust the output voltage in small steps. You can prioritize USB plug type, number of ports, charging protocol, or charging power by choosing the correct model of charger. I'll link to the Charge It Minis and the PicoWay chargers down below. Be sure to treat your DC to DC USB chargers like any other load in your system. Choose appropriate wire gauge and fusing size for the amperage of your charger. Thanks to top tier SmartyVan members for supporting the channel directly. If you want to support SmartyVan directly, click the join button down below or join a group of like-minded nerds talking about automation and vehicles on the SmartyVan Discord server. Grab yourself a no switches hat or just punch the subscribe button. All right, until next time, safe travels.